Hi guys, my Adlaw. Welcome to Nats Math TV. For today's video, my presentation is about operations on propositions. In my previous video, I had presented to you about the meaning of propositions and the two types of propositions. When we say proposition, it is a declarative statement which can either be true or false. The first type of proposition is about simple proposition. It is a proposition which conveys only one thought or idea with no connecting words. While compound propositions, these are propositions that contains two or more propositions that are put together using connecting words. These connecting words are what we call the logical operators or connectives. But before we go to our main topic, let us have first our lesson objectives. At the end of this video, you should be able to symbolize propositions and you should be able to perform different types of operations on propositions. But before we proceed to our examples, let us have first these logical operators. In algebra, we usually use the variables x, y, and z. While in logic, the most common use variables in logic are the variables P, Q, R, and S. For this video, we will be using P and Q as our propositional variables. Okay? So to start, let us have first this table. In the first column of this table, we have here the types of statements. We have conjunction disjunction, implication, biconditional, and negation. Implication is also called as conditional. Implication or conditional, or it is called an if-then statement. For the connectives, for conjunction, we use the word and. For disjunction, we use or. For implication or conditional, we have there if-then, or this is what we call an if-then statement. For biconditional, we have if and only if. And for negation, we have not. And in symbols, we have here, for and, we use the symbol. For or, for disjunction, we use the symbol. For implication or conditional, we use the symbol. By conditional, we use the symbol. For negation, we use any of these two symbols. Some sources are using the symbol and some others are using this symbol. For this video, we will be using this symbol. For example, we are given these statements and translate this one to symbolic logic. So we have P and Q for conjunction, so we have this symbol. Then for disjunction, P or Q, we have this symbol. Then for implication, if P then Q, we have this symbol. For biconditional, P if and only if Q, we have this symbol. Then for negation, not P and not Q, so we have this symbol. Now we have to take note in negation, we have here the word and. And and is used for conjunction. So this is an example of the negation of the conjunction. We can also negate disjunction, implication, or biconditional. So let's proceed to our examples. Let us have example one. We let P, George as an American, and Q, Pablo is a Filipino. So how do we write this one using connectives, the conjunction, disjunction, implication, biconditional, or how do we negate these statements? Okay, for conjunction, we have George is an American, that is our P, and Pablo is a Filipino, that is our Q. So as you can see, in conjunction, we use the word and to connect the P and the Q. Of course, in symbol, we have this P and Q. So we just simply connect the P and the Q using the word and. Now, second, for this junction, we can have George is an American or Pablo is a Filipino. In this case, we use the word or. We connect the P and the Q by the word or. This is for disjunction. Or in symbol, we will have P or Q. For conditional or implication, we can write as 
if George is an American, then Pablo is a Filipino. So we have this symbol. For biconditional, George is an American if and only if Pablo is a Filipino. So we also have that symbol. And in for negation, we can write, George is not an American and Pablo is not a Filipino. As you can see, in the first statement, George is not an American, this is from P. As you have observed, we negated the first statement P that becomes George is not an American. And as you can see also in the second statement, Pablo is a Filipino. We negated this statement. This is now Pablo is not a Filipino. And we use the word an as our connective. And for an, it is a conjunction. So therefore, this statement is a negation of the conjunction. So in symbol, it is not P and not Q. Or we can write this symbol like this. Okay? So let's proceed to example number two. We let P as COVID-19 is contagious and we let Q as many people died. So for conjunction, we can write COVID-19 is contagious and many people died. We have the same symbol. So for this junction, we can have COVID-19 is contagious or many people died. So we will have this symbol. So the difference between the two, for conjunction, we use and. For this junction, we use or to connect the P and the Q statements. Now for implication or conditional, so we have the if-then statement. If COVID-19 is contagious, then many people died. So we have this symbol. Now, another is the biconditional. COVID-19 is contagious if and only if many people died. Of course, we have the same symbol. And for the negation, we can write this one as COVID-19 is contagious and many people died. Now, unlike with the first example wherein the P is negated and Q is also negated. For this example, only P is negated. That means, that is, COVID-19 is not contagious, while the Q here is not negated, so many people died. The same we use the word an, so therefore this is a conjunction. Therefore, this is a negation of the conjunction, but for this example, only P is being negated, so that's why we have this symbol. So let's proceed to example number three. Given we let P, angle A is a right angle, and we let Q, P is a point. Now, for example, we are told to write the compound proposition using this symbolic logic or connectives. We have P and Q, so this is a conjunction because of this symbol. So when we have P and Q, we connect these two statements or we connect these two simple propositions using the word and. So we can translate this one as Angle A is a right angle and P is a point. So as you can see, our P, angle A is a right angle and our Q, P is a point that is being connected by and because this is a conjunction. Now, next, not P or Q. That means P is negated and the connective here is the word or because this is a disjunction using the symbol. Q is not negated. So meaning we will not, will not negate Q, only the P. So how do we write this statement? So we can have angle A is not a right angle or P is a point. So we negate the P here. So we have here the not. Then we use the symbol or because this is disjunction and P is a point. We, do not, we did not negate it Q. We have P is a point. Another this is P implies not Q. That means if we are going to write this one, this is implication or conditional. If we are going to write the compound proposition for this one, so we can have if angle A is a right angle, then P is not a point. In this case, P is not being negated. That's why we have angle A is a right angle. Then this time, our Q is negated. So therefore, we have P is not a point. Then, since this is an application, so we use an if-then statement. Then next we have, 
by conditional, but P and Q are not negated. So we can write the statement as angle A is a right angle if and only if P is a point. So next is the negation of the conjunction. We have this symbol N. So therefore, we can write this statement as angle A is not a right angle and P is not a point because both P and Q are negated. That's why we negate the P and we negate the Q. So let us proceed to example number four. We let P square is a rhombus and we let Q it has four equal sides. We write the compound proposition using this symbolic form. We have P and Q. So this is conjunction because we have this symbol for N. So when we write this one into compound proposition, we connect these two simple proposition by the word and. So we can have square is a rhombus and it has four equal sides. So we just simply use the word and here. This is our P and this is our Q. So this is our conjunction. Next is not P or Q. So the P is negated, so therefore we will negate P, but our Q remains the same. And we use the disjunction because this is the symbol for or. So the statement becomes square is not a rhombus. So you can see we have the word not or it has four equal sides. Our Q stays the same. So square is not a rhombus or it has four equal sides. Next is P implies Q. P and Q are not negated. So if then statement, so we can write this one. If square is a rhombus, then it has four equal sides. Next is the reverse. We have the Q implies P. So we can write the statement as if it has four equal sides, then square is a rhombus. So this is our Q based on this given, and this is our P. Now for biconditional, P and Q. So we can have Square is a rhombus if and only if it has four equal sides. Now, next is the negation of the conjunction because we have the and here. So we will negate both P and Q. So we can have square is not a rhombus and it has no equal sides. Now let's proceed to the last one. We have not P implies not Q. This means both P and Q are negated, but this is an implication, meaning this is a conditional. We use this arrow symbol. So we can say that this is the negation of the implication. The negation of the implication. So we will negate this statement. So we can say, if square is not a rhombus, then it has no equal sides. Okay? Before we go, let us have first this practice exercise. We let P as the measure of angle ABC is equal to 75 degrees, and we let Q, it is an acute angle. And you write the compound proposition using these symbols. We have a conjunction, the disjunction, P is negated, implication, we also have implication, but this time we have the Q implies P. Then by conditional, the negation of the conjunction and the negation of the implication or the conditional. Okay, that's it. I hope you have learned something from this video. For my references, and thank you and God bless.